Our nation relies on finite fossil fuels for over 80% of our energy needs. These fuels not only cause us to be heavily dependent on other nations for our energy resources, but an ever-growing mountain of evidence shows continued usage at these levels will bring about severely detrimental impacts to our environment. To help us gain energy independence and to avert these potentially staggering repercussions, we will explore a series of alternative energy resources. However, we will also show that there is no simple solution to this complex problem. Okay, so I have hydrogen. A hydrogen fuel cell works by hydrogen goes into an anode where it's oxidized and separated into protons and electrons. Protons <coughs> travel through an electrode, while the electrons are forced to travel through an electric motor. And then they travel to the cathode where they meet with oxygen and create water. The benefits of hydrogen energy is it's portable like gas, like you can go to a fuel pump, fuel up your hydrogen car and go. It's also a very clean fuel because hydrogen goes in and only water comes out. The only problems with hydrogen is, one, it requires energy to create hydrogen. One of the solutions for this is to use electrolysis of water, which takes the water and makes hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. <coughs> you can use solar power and have an electrolysis station in your own home. Uh, and then hydrogen is also hard to transport because it's so <coughs> small. But the latest breakthrough in this is graphene coating around tanks, which is a single layer of carbon so that the hydrogen can't get through. So hydrogen isn't a solution to the like, energy crisis, but it is a way to take a solution and make it portable. Hello. Uh, what is ethanol? Ethanol is the rock, is a simple um, organic uh, organic alcohol uh, that is derived from uh, two carbon chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what it does is we derive it from uh, corn, which we because of the sugar. Sorry, I'm, I'm all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we we are after it because of low carbon dioxide to, re to replace our, the high octane that we use in our own gas tanks. Um, however. This requires a lot of farmland to grow specifically corn. That is a monoculture, which as the Irish has taught us, uh, does not work out very well for civilization. Uh, the energy costs are very high for this. We don't really gain much for energy for ethanol. There's a lot loss in the harvesting and the separation from water. Uh, it, corn is a very poor choice. Switchgrass would be better. Uh, even deriving it from cellulose would be better. Cellulose is a much longer uh, sugar molecule than uh, simple starches. However, biodiesel is a growing field where uh, bacteria and algae actually produce it. This has an interesting trade-off where we use the carbon dioxide that's already, we put too much already in the atmosphere. We take that out and make more fuel out of it. Uh, so there's less or lower cost. It benefits pharmaceuticals because we already have these huge distillation plants that we use for uh, like insulin. And what we use for that same principles, we don't need to replace and develop a whole lot more technology. We just need to re expand infrastructure rather than develop a whole lot more. So, but there are a lot of problems, such as quarantine hazards. We don't want bacteria and algae that can produce uh, triglycerides that are capable of exploding in engines into the atmosphere or uh, into uh, environments. So we don't want rivers lighting on fire all over again. <laughs> and I get space to put it all. We're going to put all these little huge warehouses. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> Today's discussion will be a brief extraction of methane gas. Hydraulic fracturing, fracking, involves the high pressure injection of chemically treated water and sand into shale rock, which breaks up the shale rock and releases gas and oil that are not accessible by vertical drilling methods. Vertical drilling has been used since 1949, but with the recent addition of horizontal drilling, has improved the capabilities and efficiency of the technique, while at the same time increasing its risk. This and for other reasons, fracking is currently controversial. While proponents argue that fracking allows access to otherwise unreachable energy sources, creates jobs, and keeps energy prices low, critics argue that these techniques chemically pollute the environment and subvert public concern in favor of industrial energy profits. Thank you. Some pros for solar energy is it provides energy to remote locations like satellites in space. It's less dependent on fossil fuels. They, solar panels can pay for themselves in 10 years under current conditions. They produce quiet energy unlike some other types of energy like wind turbines. Um, the only pollution from solar panels is the manufacturing of them themselves. 
and they have little to no maintenance. You would clean them like you would clean your windows. Some cons is the initial cost for a home system is about $15,000 to $30,000. They don't produce energy at night, and weather and pollution can interfere with their efficiency. And storing solar energy is not quite developed to its potential. So quickly and simply how solar panels work, um, sunlight hits electrons in silicon layers and then an electrical field caused by the silicon layers pushes the electrons up to metal conducting strips, which then can conduct the energy into a house to be used as electricity. And that energy is also conducted back out to a metal backing on the solar panels so it can be reused and complete the circuit. I'm going to be talking about wind energy. Um, the biggest pro I see with wind energy is that it doesn't use up all of our natural resources like some of the other energy options. And wind is free. Um, a big con is, like Michaela said, that people think that they're too noisy. And they also kill thousands of migratory birds and bats. And they have a high upfront cost. I'm going to talk about horizontal wind access turbines. There are vertical wind access turbines, but the most common ones around here are horizontal wind access turbines. And the way that they work is that they um, take the kinetic energy from the wind, and the wind spins these rotor blades, and that energy is then transferred into a shaft that's inside here. And the shaft spins, and that goes into the generator, which has these magnets in it, and the magnets spin around. And then the magnets spinning around transfers the energy of the voltage into a wire, a coil of wire, and then it travels down and then into the system. So that's how the kinetic energy gets transferred into the voltage. I'm going to talk about recycling. The primary aim of recycling is to reduce the amount of waste heading for landfills and to conserve valuable resources. Saving landfill space, recycling aluminum, paper, or plastic saves a considerable amount of energy compared to creating new products from raw materials. One of the most efficient forms of recycling is aluminum recycling. Aluminum can be reused repeatedly and requires very little processing to make it available for reuse. Each year, the aluminum industry pays out more than $800 million for empty aluminum cans. Lead empty batteries are the most recycled products in the world. Because of their efficiency in the recycling process, almost 80% of the lead used in the US comes from recycling rather than mining. Paper is recycled in the biggest quantity in the US and can be recycled five to eight times. Newspapers have been recycled profitably for decades and recycling of other papers is growing. Plastic, compared to aluminum, is significantly less efficient. Only 8% of it is being recovered. The major problems of plastic recycling is the different types of plastics that can be mixed for recycling and the difficulty of separating them. Glass recycling is less efficient than, than many other forms of recycling due to their costly processing required to return glass to a usable raw state. Recycling glass only saves about 30% of the energy cost of producing new glass and the raw materials required are in abundant supply. Our main goal in the future is to lead a sustainable lifestyle by conserving energy and resources to recycle. Nanotechnology is the manipulation of matter at the scale of the nanometer, or one billionth of a meter. Doing this creates materials with unique and desired properties. The larger the surface area of a catalyst, the better it works, and we can use nanotechnology to maximize. If we take a one centimeter cube and divide it into many one nanometer cubes, its surface area grows dramatically from a mere six centimeters squared to 60 million centimeters squared. This is still the same amount of matter, but with a radically different structure. A catalyst that takes advantage of this, a metallic nanophone, for example, would see an immense increase in efficiency over a standard catalyst. In fact, catalysts found in hydrogen fuel cells and in biofuel production are key cost and efficiency limiting elements. But as with any new technology, there are risks involved, those of human health, environmental impact, and even doomsday scenarios. However, with comprehensive study and careful risk management, the places nanotechnology can take us are only limited by our imaginations.
Thank you for joining us on this very wild ride and crash course of uh, energy usage. Uh, what we want to take away from this mostly is uh, we need to get away from oil, and it's going to be a very hard habit to kick. This is something that has kind of spurred us through the Industrial Revolution. This is something that has gotten away from uh, the hunter, well, not the hunter and gatherer, but kind of our equivalents of it today. Um, we need to get away from the hor horrible uh, CO2 emissions, and we need to relieve our dependence on oil and get rid of all that social economic turmoil that we see in today's standard. Uh, we need to find new, new sustainable and renewable energy. However, it is not going to be easy. This is not an easy test for humanity right now. This is going to take a lot of work. And it's going to take work on our parts here. We can't just wait for uh, like scientists or politicians to take care of it for us. Uh, one thing that we can do especially is recycle. Uh, heavy, heavy metals especially, like batteries, lead, uh, like cadmium and stuff like that, lithium especially. People in China have to mind that. People in China die for that, and that's all for us. Uh, so, especially be informed, you know, know what's going on in the world, know what you can do, know what is being done. Uh, and there is no silver bullet. Not one little thing that we talk about today is really going to cure us, except for maybe in a town of technology, but that also has the possibility to destroy it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so please, uh, you know, keep in mind who you vote for when you, uh, like, we need people who in, in government who want to prioritize research. Taxes aren't always, you know, good, but they're needed. So that's kind of our little standard here today. Thank you. Thank you.